Among today's flurry of NBA news is report that Kawhi Leonard is going to be out with a right knee injury that the Clippers are concerned is an ACL injury. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. According to Ramona Shelburne, they do need to do some more imaging to determine the full extent of the injury, but the concern here is that this is a very bad injury for Kawhi. This was the play in game four where Kawhi got hurt. We can see he's driving in here, gets bumped a little bit by Joe Ingles, and right there as he takes that plant step here with his right leg, is gonna be when that injury occurs. Looking at this sequence, there actually is a mechanism for an ACL injury to occur. And it again is right there on that step when Kawhi plants as he's getting bumped here by Joe Ingles. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, the ACL is highlighted in green and it's a ligament that sits on the inside portion of the knee and runs from the front of the tibia to the backside of the femur. It's primarily responsible for limiting the forward and backwards motion of the femur on the tibia, but also provides rotational stability and is particularly important with any sort of cutting and pivoting motion on the court. And some key terminology, a sprain is an injury to a ligament, such as the ACL, and a strain is an injury to a muscle or a tendon. There really is nothing that happens to an ACL in the acute sense other than a tear, whether it's a very mild partial tear with just some microscopic tearing and stretching of the fibers, or it's a full thickness complete rupture. There's a few key things that we can look for on every ACL tear that explains the mechanism of why it occurs. The first is going to be internal rotation of the tibia or the lower bone of the leg. So we're looking at this portion of Kawhi's leg during this whole sequence to determine whether or not it rotates inward this way towards his body. As Kawhi comes through here and plants with that right leg and then transitions into that motion, that foot position is going to cause the tibia to internally rotate. And that internal rotation of the tibia relative to the femur puts more stress on the ACL. The next thing we're gonna see is something called a knee abduction moment, or in other words, an excessive torque applied about the knee. We think of this a lot of times as that action of the knee caving inward, and here we can see as Kawhi kinda of comes through, it's slight, but there is a little bit of just positional change where that knee is coming inward, but when we combine that with the third part of this, which is the trunk leaning over the side that's affected, what that does is it shifts your center of gravity over that affected leg. So now when it's shifted over, there's this moment created with the tendency of the body to sort of rotate down this way. That loads the knee inward combined with that internal rotation is the mechanism that causes that ACL tear to occur. And it's really those three things that we see with pretty much every ACL tear. It's that tibial rotation, it's that knee abduction moment with the knee kind of coming inward, and it's that trunk leaning over the affected side that produce the necessary forces to cause the ACL to tear. This report from Ramona Shelburne is a little bit confusing because honestly, most of the time when somebody has an ACL tear, we do the MRI pretty quickly and we don't have any issues with the swelling in terms of seeing what's going on with the ligament. Also, if the ligament is completely torn where it's a clear traumatic episode, the knee swells up pretty big really, really quick. And so Kawhi would have had a ton of swelling the night of the game. I'm sure we would have heard about this a lot sooner. So all this combined together does make me think that the Clippers feel this is a less severe grade of a sprain or less severe of a tear to the ligament. This reporting implies that they haven't actually seen confirmation of the tear on the imaging. Otherwise, they would have just reported it as a tear. So they're probably going off of their physical exam test to determine what ligaments could be injured within the knee. So maybe we'll get really lucky here and see the MRI and all of this worry will have been for naught. But typically when we see reports of fears like these types of injuries, they usually end up being confirmed. Even when an athlete has just a mild ACL sprain where it's not completely torn, they typically still have surgery. That's because if this ACL heals in an elongated or stretched position, you can get a lot of instability within the knee joint that can affect how the athlete performs in their sport. It's not impossible. In fact, the average person who gets an ACL tear sometimes might not even have surgery because you don't have to have surgery to allow that ACL to ultimately heal. But when you demand the high performance athleticism of a professional athlete, particularly a basketball player, you oftentimes do need to do that surgery to get that knee back to feeling as normal as it could. The last part of this that people are wondering is how in the world did Kawhi continue to play? Again, if this was just a partial tear, then there was still some integrity of that ligament and so there wasn't complete instability. Also, the ligament is passive, meaning it's not moving, it's not actively firing like a muscle. And the muscles around our knee help to support that ACL, particularly the hamstring muscles. Remember the wrestler Spencer Lee who wrestled on a torn ACL? In those situations, they're able to do it because of the dynamic support they get from the rest of their soft tissues. So it's not completely absurd to think that Kawhi was able to keep playing with this ACL injury just because of the compensation he was probably able to get from the rest of his body. Finally, a big narrative this season has of course been the schedule and how that affects injury risk. 
So let's apply that to Kawhi Leonard. One of the biggest parts of this injury that contributes to that excessive load about the knee is when Kawhi's trunk tilts or leans over that affected side because that changes how those forces and moments get distributed down through the body. Now, how much of that was because of Joe Ingles making contact here? I mean, this is a standard basketball play that is in no way Ingles' fault, but certainly Kawhi's body shifting over contributed to the load to cause the tear. So that's something that you can't control, no matter what the schedule is in the season. You make contact, these things can happen. But it's plausible to think that if there's a degree of fatigue in those muscles, especially at the end of games, we know there's a relationship between cognitive function and kind of this ability to understand your surroundings that can be influenced by fatigue and put you at risk of injuries. That's because again, his muscles are trying to fire to stabilize that joint right there as he lands. And that requires processing coming from the brain down to those muscles. And so with fatigue, at the end of games, certainly in this kind of stressful season scenario, it's plausible to think that there could be some role with all that in this injury because of how it would affect the body's ability to protect itself. So that's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.